Here's the power plant test stand that I'll be using to test the variety of power plant options that uh, the EA fleet uses. It starts with this uh, 8 by 8 by 8 inch uh, concrete block uh, filled with concrete and a vertical member made of aluminum angle to which is mounted the power plant motor itself with the motor leads coming to the ESC down here. This member of uh, angle aluminum swings freely like this so that any force applied through the axis of the motor when it uh, powers up is directed at the center of this kitchen scale, the display of which in, in grams or ounces is here. Here's the side view of the test stand. Here's the watt meter, the speed control, the infrared uh, thermometer here, the kitchen scale, and this arm of uh, angle aluminum which swings freely with the power plant attached so that it's able to push directly back and perpendicularly to the surface of this scale. The wattage, amp draw, and volts will be measured on this Hobby King. Uh, 010 uh, power analyzer. This is a great little watt meter as well as a battery tester. You can test the state of your batteries. And that of, is being powered in turn by these three uh, Turnigy Nanotech uh, 2200 milliamp power batteries connected in parallel. This isn't a likely battery set up for most airplanes. However, did one have a good battery uh, reservoir to minimize the effects of voltage sag on the testing process to have better objectivity between the power plants that I'm testing. The ESC is mounted here. This one is a Turnigy HexFET 25 amp, and this is an infrared thermometer pointed directly at the heat sink of the ESC just to measure the, the surface temperature of the ESC. Notice the ESC is mounted out of the airflow and out of the prop glass, so it will tend to heat up pretty quickly. There's no real scientific basis for comparison for the temperature. I just want to monitor it, and if there's any obvious problems from overheating, I want to be able to detect that early. Here's a simple digital thermometer just to display the ambient temperature for a determination of density altitude here. So I can give you a comparison of what thrust you might expect if you live higher or lower elevations than I do in Phoenix, Arizona, which is 1,550 feet as measured by this GPS. The power setting to the power plant is provided by this Turnigy uh, servo tester, which has a simple dial to moderate the power of the uh, motor and has a generous uh, servo extension lead just so I can stand back for safety while I run this up. What you see here is my lighting system for the test stand. It's simply a angle aluminum to which I've applied the white LED strips from Hobby King which are self-adhesive right to the surface of that and these are powered by the 12 volt uh, solar derived bench power that I have behind the backdrop there. So for the actual testing, I'll mount the desired motor, propeller, and ESC in place. I'll have a stopwatch for some components of the testing, ambient temperature, ESC temperature, wattage, amp, and voltage. And I will uh, take the servo tester and stand clear and power up the motor for maximum thrust, uh, monitoring the temperature, and I'll also measure the wattage per thrust. That's the number of grams per watt, and that's a great measurement of efficiency of a particular uh, propeller and motor combination at a given altitude. Now a static thrust measurement is certainly not without some definite limitations. First of all, this doesn't replicate uh, flight dynamics uh, in any way, shape, or form, except at the moment of takeoff, or perhaps arguably while hovering your aircraft vertically. Uh, that is because the airflow through the propeller is generated only by the propeller itself. There's no flight airflow through the prop. Therefore, there's an area of um, low pressure air in front of the propeller as it sucks the air through it. This contributes to a decrease in the power generated in a static thrust environment. Also, you'll see that there are some other objects uh, in the general environment of the propeller which are certainly going to change the airflow characteristics through that but unfortunately for my budget there's no way getting around using this kind of an apparatus but this is a good apples to apples fairly objective comparison between power plants keeping in mind the shortcomings of the static thrust measurement